Good afternoon, everybody. Great. It's my very great pleasure to welcome you all to Castletown Bear Library. Um, familiar faces and not so familiar. But you're all very welcome on behalf of Cork County Library and Arts Service. It's lovely to see the Camera Club here in such numbers and lots of other visitors as well. And lots of people who are, I know, our dog owners and people who are in, in the exhibition and who are dying to see their portraits. <laughs> all will be revealed in due course. First of all, though, I'd like to ask Jerry Power, who's the chairperson of Bear Camera Club, to say a few words. Uh, first, I'd like to welcome everybody here. Uh, we, if I got the name right. We do. Uh, we yes, we did, yeah. We yeah. organised it again. And Matt then, who organised it on the camera, and everybody else at the car. Mm -hmm. And hope you all enjoy it. That's pretty much it. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Jerry. Thank you. Well done. Well done. Um, now, I'm going to ask Bree Dean Ash, who's here to my left. Okay. Um, Breeding is a community worker with the HSC and she is the main facilitator for this project morning. But I just want to explain just a little bit about the project. It's called Bear a Pause for Health. Pause as in? As in P-A-W-S. <laughs> and it's really about highlighting the fact that dogs are really good for your health. I think a lot of people here probably have dogs and we all firmly believe that dogs are excellent for my health. I'm certain that my dog keeps me sane an awful lot of the time, gets me out exercising, it reduces isolation, you know, all of those good things. And actually, the thing is, what a lot of us intuitively know as dog owners um, is backed up now by various, a lot of studies, actually, that show that we, it really is good for our health. Uh, we're all very familiar, I think, now with therapy dogs. So we know that um, dogs can be really good for, we'd say, for <coughs> children with autism or going into hospices or hospitals or whatever. Um, but, you know, like I say, there's a lot of research backing up the fact that they're, they get us out walking, they reduce isolation, they're good for reducing um, stress. Stroking a dog is really, really, really good for us after all. Um, and uh, even the Irish Heart Foundation, I noticed on their site where these days, that they said um, that actually, there's a, they, they also said that it may be good for your heart having a dog. Mm -hmm. So we started this little project um, just because do you know, I couldn't think of any other community that has actually a dog project <laughs> specifically saying that dogs are good for your health, other than therapy dogs. So um, it's just highlighting that. It's a very modest project, and we're doing three things this autumn. We're doing, first of all, a small project through all the national schools on Beira, all nine of them. We're doing fifth and sixth class. Um, they're writing a small little essay, and that's going on from September, October, November. Then we have today, and thanks very much to Beira Camera Club for this. And then on the 4th of October, which happens to be World Animal Day, and it's also St. Francis of Assisi Day, we're going to have um, a blessing of all pets, not just dogs. We're extending paws to cover other pawed friends, but also cars, fishes, whatever you want. Um, <laughs> in Castletown Bear, it's going to be just down, down the pier, the pier, near the auction yeah, hall, yeah. On, at about half two, but you'll be hearing about it. There's going to be advertising starting next week. So that's the first Sunday of October. After that, we've lots of ideas of, of how this project could develop. Um, and, you know, hopefully it will be things that the, the various villages and areas in Beira will actually take up in the future. But really, we'd love to hear from people to see uh, if they have any ideas that we could, we could work on. I mean, uh, if, if things like this are a success, um, it's because people really buy into it. And when you start a project, you start with three things like this and you hope that they're a success. What we can do. I think it's a really exciting project. I'm a dog person. I, was, I grew up with a dog. And so we've always had a dog in our family and in my life. So I just think this is fun. And I like doing community work that's fun. And I think because I'm in the health board, um, it kind of amalgamates two things that I really, I'm really think are really important. One's health and dogs. I think dogs are just such fantastic creatures. And being sort of in close contact with another sentient being, I think is just so important for us. Immersing ourselves in nature, we're discovering again, is really, really something we need to do. So this is just a way to do it. So thanks everybody for coming today and thanks a million to the to Bear a Camera Club for all of this. Okay, no, no, me this. Now, the main business of the day is getting to launch this exhibition of beautiful photographs, which I actually have seen. Lucky me, <laughs> I'm telling you they're brilliant. So, um, we thought long and hard about who we'd invite to launch the exhibition. It was actually, we didn't have to think very long and hard. We thought we'd have to, but we did a bit of soul searching. And the obvious choice of person to launch it was Sean O'Leary, who's here. Um, because, uh, for a couple of reasons, two very obvious reasons. He's an artist and a, a person of creativity himself. Um, but also he's a dog lover and dog owner. 
So I don't need to tell you more anything more about Sean, really. You can tell it yourself. Okay, so Sean. Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon everybody. Um, and I really, it was a real honour to be asked to do this. Um, again, I, I'm a wonderful dog person, and I was born in the Chinese year of the dog. And again, thank you to the Camera Club for asking me, because, you know, the photos you put up every month, I don't think you realise how many people see them, how many people look forward to seeing them, who watch all your names. I think, you know, even if you're driving off here late at night, if you're driving through Castletown Bear, there's always somebody around the window, and the other window as well, and it's a real, um, it's a beautiful guide to Castletown Bear, your work, and, and I think we really owe thanks to the Camera Club for working hard every month and putting it up there. Thank you. you, know. but you might not you might not see the benefits, but they're they're huge. Yeah. You know, they're like ripples in the ocean. Yeah. And again, thank you to Dorothy and the library here. I think everybody has noticed now since it's moved and enlarged, it really is is the go-to place for the community. And Dorothy is quite a, quite a, a linchpin uh -huh. in the whole workings of Castle Tombier. Not just to ourselves, but to our um, diaspora. 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 <laughs> 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 But in working out what I was going to say about this, I was looking up about dogs and my own feelings about dogs. But the one thing I came across, most people think that man domesticated dogs. But actually what I learned over looking at documentaries and reading stuff was that it appears that a certain amount of wolves saw, these, uh, saw the cavemen or the Stone Age man traveling, killing animals, eating them, and certain wolves started following the tribes of man, and they started seeing that they could eat the carcasses that were left over by the man. And then man realized, instead of chasing these wolves away, the wolves stayed around and were good for protection and became the first watchdog. So it was, it was a really, dogs decided to be domesticated by man. So it's a kind of, um, they pulled the wool over our eyes that way. <laughs> and I mean, throughout all the years, they've, um, hunting, herding, traveling, and um, there's so many uses dogs have given themselves up for our own benefit. I mean, you're all thinking of one now that I can't think of because I'm a bit nervous, but um, they're all there. I mean, um, they've used their hearing, they've used their smell, they've used their strength. Even um, dogs have won the X Factor now and we're on the Royal <laughs> Variety Show. And so, and all that, there's one thing that has really stayed with us along the way. And those are words like friendship, loyalty, companion. They're somehow, to me, they really are like a, a lightning rod for our emotions. You know, if you're sad, if you're feeling depressed, if you're feeling maybe too happy or something, they're able to ground you. They're able to take your emotion, put it into the ground and level it out. And even for me, the, um, when my parents died, the grief, I found the dogs were great at relieving the grief somehow. They were able to, now again, it could be psychosomatic that I'm only thinking this, but it still worked and it was still brilliant. Even one day my sister, who's not mad about dogs said, you might think I'm crazy, but Sheba reminds me of dad. And I said, don't worry at all because Makusha reminds me of mom. <laughs> <laughs> and again, I think they're pulling another trick on us because as much as you love your dog, as much as you care and look after your dog, you don't realize it, but your dog loves you more and looks after you a lot more as well without you realizing it. So I suppose we should have three hip hips and hoorays, but when I say hip hip, I was thinking maybe people could say woof woof. <laughs> hip hip. <laughs> hip hip. <laughs> hip hip. There <laughs> <laughs> we go. Thank you yep. very much. But we need some photographs. Oh, yes. Photographs. Yes. So I didn't have to do that. It's not all about me. I know it's not <laughs>